Hello everyone, I'm Deborah from Deborah Dell's Craft Room. We're going to be painting a Halloween design on this big gourd. It's going to be a silhouette of two cats in the moonlight. I hope you enjoy okay, the video. The first thing I did to this gourd before I painted it white was I drew a big moon on the best side of the gourd. Then I painted that moon light buttermilk with two coats of light buttermilk. After that, I painted the gourd, the entire gourd, including the moon, with two more coats. This area where the moon was kept getting more and more coats on it so you could still see it even though this was being painted the same color. And then just now, I drew the moon back with on. Spiced pumpkin. We're going to do long strokes from the stem down to the blossom end. This particular gourd does not have a handle, so I'm going to only do half at a time and let it dry. You have to move fast so that you don't leave ridges or streaks that don't that don't look real. Remember to go all the way up and down with your strokes. So it doesn't leave any brush marks. I have this one coated, but I was thinking, you know, it's pretty hard sometimes to hold the gourd right when it doesn't have a stem or, or a handle, I mean. So if you don't like the way your streaks look, all you have to do is paint it two times and the whole streak effect will be gone, but you're your uh, gourd will be solid orange. And that is acceptable as well. So I put a lot of, trying to get these streaks to go right, I put a lot of uh, orange paint on the moon. So I'm gonna go over it with white again. Okay. I base the moon back in again. And now, we have to draw a fence for the cats to sit on. What I'm going to do, this is a little trick that I use to put belts on Santa Claus and have them be in a straight line, is I pile things up. You can use a book or, you know, whatever you have available. I'm stacking these up and setting the gourd down next to it and putting my pencil on, and what I do is I just turn the gourd and strike a line like this. This one isn't as straight as I'd like it, but at least it's got an idea of where the gourd... Do you see that line? Yeah. It's a little crooked because I was rocking the gourd, but um, I'm going to straighten it out now. And and make the rail fence. I'm going to draw the rail fence in. <clears throat> and if it's not straight, fix it. It's better to, I have a towel underneath me, and it's better to do this on a table or a countertop or something so that the gourd turns easier. So, anyway. And just strike the other line. It, if, you, if you think that 
this, this line, the top line that you made is too high, then you strike the line, the second line of the rail fence low. If you think it's too low, then you can strike the, the uh, second line over the top of it and that will adjust the height of it a little bit. Okay, so I have two lines there. That is the, uh, the fence, the fence rail. And then I'm gonna do some perpendicular lines. So these are the fence posts. You want them to cross over each other a little. And when I'm done drawing these, I will show you how I did it. Okay, I put the fence posts in. They're a little messy. I had to do some adjusting because fence posts are straight and gourds are round. When you do your fence posts, be really careful to keep the point of this the same height on both sides and the same distance from the side. Otherwise, the cats won't fit in there right. So there you have it, so far so good. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the moon yellow. Okay, I have moon yellow paint. And I'm going to paint the whole moon yellow. Oops, this is pretty. Okay, the moon is painted. I think it might need a second coat, so I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then do that. Next, I'm gonna paint the fence. I'm gonna use a number three round for this because of the points, I want to make sure that they look good. Okay. I have these little points done. Now I'm going to get the number four flat and <clears throat> do the do the rail. Try to get it as straight as you can along the edge of the yellow. Okay, the rail fence is in. Now we have to design these cats. They have to fit in between the fence with a little bit of, you know, fence on each side. So I'm gonna find the center first because unless you wanna put only one cat on, which is fine if you wanna put just one, but I'm gonna put two at least I think I'm going to put two. So I'm going to find the center and then put a cat on each side of center. So far, I have the bodies on.
these cats don't have to be the same size. If you want to make one a little taller than the other, that would be good. And, uh, or fatter, or whatever you want, whatever you want. I can make a template for these and make it available for you if you don't think you can draw these. Okay. <clears throat> okay, these cats are drawn. Now I just have to figure out how to do their tails or their bottoms. Okay, I have their bottoms hanging off the back and now I'm going to put some tails on them. I hope this turns out all right. Okay. Okay, their tails. Okay, now the tails. Mm -hmm. One of them I made a little mistake on, so I'm going to have to touch up this orange. And I'm going to show you how I do it. I figured out a new way. Whenever you have this particular orange streaky thing, what you can do is put white on it, white on the mistake. And when it dries, then put orange over it. That way it won't be too thick on there. I'm going to make these heads, they're round right now, I'm going to make them a little more oval. Okay, so we have the cats in the moonlight now. We're going to paint them black. Okay, I have the cats painted. I'm going to do their tails, but I'm changing uh, paintbrushes, so I thought I'd give you a, a peek at it. I'm also going to fix that spot next to the tail with some orange right now. Spiced pumpkin, I, I mean. Let me show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, it's gone. Still looks streaky. So that worked out pretty good. All right, now I'm going to paint the tails and I will turn it around and show it to you. Okay, here are the cats with their tails looking at the moon, sitting on a rail fence. There's some shading involved now. I'm going to shade around the moon, around the cats, on the outside of the moon. I'm going to shade the inside of the moon with some light buttermilk. Dip your brush in the water, blot off the excess water, and put the corner into the white paint. And then start shading around the outside. It's going to brighten the moon up quite a bit. If you get onto the orange, don't worry about it because we can touch that up ever so lightly and it'll look fine.
See how that looks? Isn't that beautiful? Okay. I'm going to show you what this looks like before I touch it up so that you don't think you're doing something wrong. I, when I end my shading, I end it right inside of the cat. See? In the fence, whatever, because the black is gonna cover all that up. We're gonna be, do a big touch up as soon as all the shading is done. I still have more shading to do on the moon with a darker color now. shade here and there with the uh, antique gold. I'm going to shade in the moon like this. Every once in a while I'll just put a streaky mark in. Another one. They'll be easier to see when they're not wet anymore. Blend it out. with water so it doesn't have sharp edges. Let's see what else we got in here. Here, another one. They're not they're not in a line around. They're just here and there in the round. You could almost dry brush them on if you wanted to. Okay, now with red iron oxide, I'm going to shade a little bit over the white, very close to the edge. And I don't know if you can see that or not. Very tiny bits. You don't want to cover all the white. You just want to put it on the inside of the outside line. You don't want to bring it in to the moon. Okay, there you go. You can hardly see it, but in person you can see it. Now, with the same red iron oxide, we're going to shade the outside of the moon. A little more color this time, though, a little darker. Try not to get inside the moon with this shading. So, some things are harder to touch up than others. We're going to be shading with this red iron oxide around the fence as well, the rail fence. Okay. 
Okay, it's all shaded. Now we are going to be touching up until the cows come home. Okay, the cats are all touched up. The fence posts are touched up. And now we're gonna put some collars on these cats. Okay, the taller cat, that's gonna be the boy cat, is going to have an olive green collar. Just go straight across with the collar. Just gives it a nice little pop of color. Go a little bit past the neck so that it looks like it's big enough for him. Okay, we'll be lining that on the end so it looks like a, a collar. Now for the girl cat, I'm going to put a collar on with autumn red. You can put any color collars you want on yours. The red collar is going to need a second coat. While we're waiting for the collars to dry, we're going to put some little kitty footprints on this pumpkin. I have a brand new pencil with a nice flat eraser on it. Nobody's used it yet. And now we're going to put some uh, kitty prints across, not on the moon, but across the pumpkin. One up here, one down here, and then a few across the back if you want to. We're gonna do it with black. Okay, we're gonna have them walking from the bottom to the top so the kitty prints are going to be bigger, way bigger than the cat. Put your pencil in the paint, the eraser, make one dot, and then again dip in and right next to it so it's touching, put another dot and then Another dot, three dots. Now, with your liner or some really small brush, now before it dries and with a really small brush, you make those three dots come together more like a kitty pad. You see, draw the line over and take those points out of there. The points that come on the inside. You see how that's starting to look? This is the pad. Okay, that's the pad. Now we're going to put the little toes in. One, off to one side, two, the other side, three, and four. Now you have a kitty print. Mine is not going the direction I had planned, so I'm going to bring them up like this and down over here. We'll see how it works out. Now, without sticking your fingers in that kitty print, make another. Put, put 
put a distance between them. You don't want to have them just covering the whole thing. When you put that third toe on, it really starts to look like a kitty print. Four. There you go. Okay, now I'm going to put a little line around the ends of the collars. how that looks. I'm going to shade the green collar with Hauser Medium Green. Just a little shading, nothing much. Mostly a line, just to give it some definition. And the red collar, I'm going to shade with black. Tiny, tiny bit of black. Well, colors are done and now because the moon doesn't have much color in it I'm going to put some little hearts in there I put two red dots side by side and now with my liner brush I'm going to pull down and make hearts yeah Okay, there you go. Our little cat silhouette under the big full moon is finished. I love this thing. There you go. Thank you for watching my two black cats sitting under the full moon on a rail fence. Please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell to make sure you get notifications of future videos. Bye-bye.